Saviors, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is the second Sunday in Advent, and how blessed we are that we can come together uh, in this way to worship the Lord who is always near us. He's with you at this moment as you are grounded in the word, as you sing your praises to God. And we always know that he is indeed worthy of our praise. So it's so exciting to be able to worship with you here uh, today. It's an exciting weekend here at Our Saviors as we officially install Pastor Jason uh, as our associate pastor here. Uh, our guest on Sunday will be Pastor Steve Kotke, who is assistant to the bishop uh, for the South Central Synod of Wisconsin. Uh, and he will be here as we uh, uh, perform the installation service to, to welcome him officially into this position. Um, that service, uh, you will be able to watch live yourself right here at this YouTube site, Ministry Coordinator OSLC. Uh, it'll be uh, going live at 8.30 on Sunday. Also know that you can dial in using the phone number uh, that is available in, our, in the bulletin. Uh, it's emailed uh, to everyone in the congregation 
Uh, and, and please pass it on to um, any of our friends who don't have access to a computer or aren't able to worship in that way. You just dial that toll-free number and you're able to take it in. And so that'll be going live at 8.30 Sunday. But also know that just as you can push the button to start this at your convenience, so too after the service is over on Sunday, uh, at any point thereafter, uh, you can uh, watch that service and participate in it. Uh, as a worship or dial that number and listen to the service in, in its entirety. So all these great ways uh, for us to be able to come together in this way. Uh, again, a, a call out has been made. We're putting together something a little different uh, for our Lessons and Carols service, uh, the Sunday, first Sunday in Christmas. And so we're looking for people who are interested in either providing a recording or, or in a social distance way, uh, uh, making a, a connection here at the church to record you so that uh, you can be a part of that service. There's more details about that found uh, in our announcements. Uh, otherwise, uh, the rest of the announcements I think you can read for yourself. I do want to remind you that uh, during this time where we're not able to do uh, worship in person, uh, it is a time where we aren't having services in which we offer Holy Communion. Nonetheless, you, if you are hungering for the sacrament, are welcome to make arrangements with either myself or Pastor Jason for us to meet you in the parking lot so that you can receive the sacrament. Just uh, phone the church or, or shoot us an email and we can make arrangements for that. All right, otherwise, uh, do be taking a look at the announcements. Lots going on here at Our Saviors, even in this time uh, that is so uh, different from what we're used to. We are finding ways to be the church, and we are finding ways to serve Christ, be a community, and be giving thanks to God for the one we are preparing for in this Advent season. Now first, let's prepare our hearts to worship the Lord through our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Together let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven and you are free, free from all that holds you back, free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love, comforted by Christ's peace and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So this is the second Sunday of Advent, and so at this point, uh, let us light the candle uh, on our Advent wreath to signify this being uh, the second Sunday, beginning with this prayer. We praise you, O oh God, for this circle of light that marks our days of preparation for Christ's Advent. As we light the candles on this wreath, kindle within us the fire of your Spirit, that we may be light shining in the darkness. Enlighten us with your grace, that we may welcome others as you have welcomed us. Grant this through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain, and whose day draws near. Amen.
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Lord God, to prepare the way for your only Son. By his coming, strengthen us to serve you with purified lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Did you? 
people free from our fears and sins release us let us find our rest in thee Today we're going to look at uh, two Bible passages that are working together. Our first lesson comes from Isaiah 40. Uh, and Isaiah 40 was on Mark's mind as he thought about how to start his gospel, which is our gospel lesson today, the first verses of the first chapter of Mark's gospel. And, and he decided to begin his story about the life of Christ by talking about John the Baptist. And as he thought about John the Baptist and his role in everything, he couldn't help but think about Isaiah 40, a text so filled with hope for a people who were so suffering uh, during the time of exile that, that, that Mark knew, oh, this connects perfectly with the role John has and, and of course the goodness that God is bringing in this one who is Jesus, born to be our Savior. And so the first lesson comes to us from the 40th chapter of Isaiah. The prophet writes, Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord and make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, Surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear, says to the say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd and will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Like a shell. 
Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I'm not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is good news, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Oh, gracious God as we uh, wait for you here in this season of Advent, here in the month of December, in the midst of a year that's been so hard, we know, oh Lord, that much is being shaken and there's much that needs to be torn down. And it is for a purpose, O oh Lord, because you are coming in. You are coming in to reveal your goodness and your hope. You are coming in to hold us and guide us like a, like a shepherd among the sheep. You have come to protect us and shield us and to point out that there is a, a kingdom that's available to us tied in with your love that we can engage in right now and reflect in the lives that you are creating within us. And so help us, O oh Lord, to be prepared for your coming. And may we be the reflection of your hope that this world so desperately needs right now. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. You know, it's dawned on me, really in the last few weeks, 
And I actually have thought about it often here in this past year. 2020 has been um, such a such an awful year in so many ways. And, and among those ways, of course, is the economic impact that it has had on, on too many people, too many real good people. And yet, nonetheless, uh, that impact is, is felt here in our community, felt here in the state line and in Beloit. But as you go around town, and you look around, particularly if you go downtown, there is all kinds of activity going on. There is stuff being torn down. There is stuff being built up, and it hasn't slowed down. I mean, when did Beloit become such a hub of, of construction and activity and excitement the way that it's been even here in the year 2020? I don't know if you've been uh, on the corner of Grand and Fourth, but, but those uh, 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 Wright and Wagner lofts that are being built, that building, which is apparently one of, of three buildings that will be built, that is coming together so nicely. I saw some workers way up on the top of the roof uh, doing doing some work up there, and they are high above there. That's, that's it's dangerous work up there. And, and, and that's just been going and going uh, throughout this year. And then, of course, that's all only just a few steps away from the ballpark that's come into shape uh, over the past several months. Uh, if you haven't gotten over to Shearland or, or taken a look at the site from Bluff recently, you could see a ballpark there. It really is taking form. And when they talk about uh, it maybe being completed by June or July, yes, I mean, you could see it. It's, it, it's going to come together. And what an exciting thing uh, that is going to be for, for our town. And, and that's just a little bit of the stuff, of course, that's been being built in, in the downtown area this year and, and the past several years. Or you go out to, uh, to I-90 and, and you see how things are coming together at the intersection of I-43 and I-90 and, and Milwaukee Road. And, and uh, for a long time, I just couldn't quite envision what this was going to look like. But, but as they've leveled the hills and, and raised the, the valleys, it, it's coming together. And, and I can begin to see, and maybe you can too, uh, that this is going to be a really neat thing. Uh, once it's all completed and and I'm told and let's keep our fingers crossed that it will be done sometime at the end of next year and so let's see how that goes so this has been a place where we have seen things torn down we have seen the old even removed completely or, or renovated and repurposed for for a new purpose and and as that has come together it has just been so exciting for our community. Well, Mark begins his gospel with this kind of imagery. The imagery of, 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 of chaos, the imagery of, of someone who is, who is this wild man from the wilderness coming into the scene, John the Baptist with his, with his clothing of camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist and his, and his locusts and wild honey kind of being stuck in his beard. He comes in with a message that is powerful, a message that's so closely tied in to what is given to us in the Old Testament from Isaiah. Isaiah 40. In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. And how do you prepare the way of the Lord? You clear a path. <laughs> Whatever obstacles in the way, you knock it out of the way. If the valley's too deep, you fill in the valley so that it is level ground. If the hills and the mountains are too steep, you knock them down so that it is level and clear so that the Lord can come through. As if a deep valley or a high mountain would stop the Lord. But the purpose is not so much for the Lord, but it is for us. <laughs> for you, for me, and our community. And John the Baptist is coming into the scene with that kind of urgency. Things have got to change. Things have got to be made clear from our lives as a community and from your life as an individual. Make way so that the new can happen. And you know, it's hard to make a way like that, to tear down the old or to repurpose the old because we grow pretty attached 
to the old. We, 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 we kind of grow to like it, even when it's become a little bit inefficient or not quite as, as helpful as it used to be. We still kind of, we, we, we grow attached to, to what we have here and it's hard to let it go. But when it comes to a living faith in Jesus Christ and a relationship with the God of the cosmos, there's a whole lot of letting go that needs to happen. And that is the purpose of John the Baptist. <laughs> he is going to clear the way and he is going to warn us, you're going to have to let go of some stuff if you are going to welcome what is so wonderful. Now, I've only lived in the state line for seven years now and only been here at Our Savior's for, for about three. But, but, but nonetheless, I can sense at times with some of the changes going on here in the community, it, it's a little bit uh, uh, anxiety creating. And, and in talking to some folks, some of you who've been here your whole life, even though maybe you're seeing, you know, there is improvements here, there still is that melancholy because, boy, it's just not like it was in the old days. And, and so it, it's hard to, to necessarily become one who, who sees the good and, and, and sees the opportunity that's at hand. But, but little by little, it does come into focus. Thank goodness there was... There have been people involved in these changes and, and the things being constructed from the very beginning with a grand vision and purpose for what's going on. If you are going to go into the process of, of tearing things down, you better have a vision of where you are going <laughs> and what the completed project is to look like. And, and sometimes it's, it's hard for everyone else to catch that vision. But if you are going to be involved in the teardown, you better know what the buildup is going to look like. And that seems to be happening here in Beloit. And I hope it is happening here in our Saviors as well. How exciting it is to be welcoming a, an associate pastor, a person that we've already had a chance to get to know a little bit in just a few weeks, uh, Pastor Jason, welcoming him here, installing him uh, this weekend. In, in some respects, it, that is the, the, not quite the completion, but it's coming to a closer step of a greater vision that, that God has cast upon our congregation. It's sometimes a little bit hard to, to recognize that vision, uh, depending on where we're standing, but but through the work of, of our lay people and, and our lay leadership and, and the prayerful great work of our call committee, we've gotten to this part and, and things are indeed coming together. And so we celebrate how the Lord is, is making the, the new thing happen here at Our Saviors. But this isn't just about us as a community. This is about you as well as a child of God. And it's more than just our ministry here. When, when John the Baptist enters the scene, his message is about, about repentance, a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. It's a baptism through water, and it is through that very same water that we are welcomed into relationship with Jesus Christ. We become one with Christ through those waters of baptism, but that's only the start. <laughs> That's the tearing down that begins. It's, it's the drowning, if you will, in the water. But it's what's to come next that has more power, more impact, more joy, and more grace in our lives. John the Baptist is honest about this here in Mark chapter 1. He says, you know, someone's coming who's much greater than I. I, I I'm just coming into town with the sledgehammer. <laughs> you know, you know they, they had to tear down that old building where they're building the, the Wright and Wagner lofts now. They had to tear that down, but, but they're gone now, you know. And there had to be uh, a lot of tearing down uh, by the interstate as well in order to make these new ramps and stuff. But, but for the most part, the things are taking shape shape and now it's time for those who are doing the building well likewise <laughs> for us we need to tear down 
those things that keep us separated from God. We need to tear down those ways we may be shielded from the grace that is always available to us. We seek to have those removed so that they might be filled with what is good. What does John the Baptist say? I baptize you with water, but the one more powerful than I is coming after me. He'll baptize with the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit dwells in you and in every person who is one in the Lord. And we want that Spirit to grab hold of us. We want that Spirit to illumine our way. And so let's not just stop and stall at what needs to be torn down. Let's not become frozen in mourning because we miss those things that we've sought to be removed from our lives. But instead, let's be ready for the whirlwind of the Spirit that's looking to, to move us ahead in grace and love. The Spirit's just waiting to do that, ready to take hold. You know, and it's put so wonderfully in, in, uh, in Isaiah chapter 40. We get the, the powerful message of preparing the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. But the very last work, work, a verse of this passage gives us the vision of what's going on. Why do we bother to be a part of this in the first place? Why do we want this to happen? Why is it that this is so great to be caught up in this salvation? And it's put the vision right here so clearly for us. Why? Because he will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. We need this hope. We need this love. We need to know God is here. And so whatever it takes, the practice of worship, of, of hearing the beautiful music of, uh, from something like uh, Handel's Messiah, as we heard just a bit ago, putting these these words into song and and I was blessed to be able to stand off to the side and, and I could look you know this window <laughs> I could look at that beautiful stained glass window over the bell choir that one of which Jesus is holding the sheep <laughs> Jesus is looking to hold you you know he's right there with you right now he's there with you loving you caring for you ready to hold you and guide you and to shine his light on you so that you might know that there is hope today, hope for tomorrow, no matter what it is you face. I will never leave you. So that's the vision we're given. And so don't ever go into any kind of season of tearing down unless you know the greater purpose. One of the neat construction projects that has happened here in Beloit the last couple of years is the powerhouse at Beloit College. You know, my daughter Bailey is a student at Beloit College and she works in the powerhouse. In fact, she's received a bit of a promotion where, where now she's in a position as like an assistant manager that uh, she has more authority there and more responsibility. It's kind of neat. This, this great uh, uh, renovation project, a, a jewel here in our community, and Bailey is, is a part of it. But the renovation of the powerhouse wasn't done simply for the sake of renovating something. It wasn't done so that we would have a, a new sort of field house designed by a, a world-class architect and, and it could sit there along the shores of the Rock River. It was done for the purpose of being available to the students of Beloit College. And it was done for the purpose of Beloit College, uh, the oldest college in the state of Wisconsin, to be able to do their work in educating young people to be leaders and movers and shakers in this world. And so none of this stands alone. It is done for a purpose. And what happens in you and what happens in our community and what happens in those around us, in our families and in our neighborhoods through this Holy Spirit that we've been baptized in through Christ has a greater purpose than just 
the hope it gives you or the comfort that it gives to our community. It has a purpose of bringing the good news of Jesus Christ into the lives of those around us and to the whole world. Mark states that purpose in the very first verse of what I read to you today. Mark chapter 1, verse 1. And then he goes about telling about how that very thing happens and you are a part of it. And so let the Spirit grab hold of you <laughs> and be ready to be guided into the new things that God is involving you in and His great purposes in His great world that He is forever a part of. In Jesus' name, amen. Comfort your people and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. Loving God, you set the stars in the sky and breathe life into the earth. Renew the face of creation where it is in need of your healing touch. Mend the wounds of environmental damage and restore balance to ecosystems so that all creation can declare your praise. Hear us, O oh God.
pleading God, you ask us to make uneven ground smooth. Make even the disparities between your people. A sustain and support people with physical and intellectual disabilities. Accompany disability advocates who work for a world accessible to all. And teach us to celebrate the great diversity in our midst. Hear us, O oh God. Tender God, you know sorrow and joy alike. We pray for those in our families and congregation who are not joyful in this holiday season. Comfort those who grieve. Be a companion to all who are lonely. Tend those who are sick or struggling with depression. And gather all people in your healing embrace. Cultivate our joy as we install Pastor Jason as our associate pastor and inspire his leadership that he may help us to work collaboratively in preparing for your presence among us. Hear us, O oh God. God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So just a reminder uh, that uh, as we uh, come together to worship, the, the spiritual practice of being generous ties us in with the salvation which is at hand, with the reality of God's provisions through the kingdom of God. And so I want to remind you that you may use our online link on our website to, to make a donation to our Savior's or you can send it directly to the church. The address is included in, in the bulletin that's available on the website. And so let us pray. Generous God, you have created all that is, and you provide for us in every season. Help us rest in goodness as we reconcile with those who offend us. Grant us the peace of the Lord in our relationships with others. Bless all the gifts that we offer, that through our gifts, the world will receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. Let's pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and bring you peace in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.